thousands of years ago, they were Apollo, Zeus, Ares. Now they are Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, and the other heroes and villains of DC and Marvel Comics. Join us every week as we discuss the legendary stories, characters, concepts, and other parts of comics as we examine the modern pantheon of heroes. Let's get heroic. Welcome to Under Two Cates, the podcast for the comic book fan. Welcome to Under Two Capes. I am Jared. And I'm Lad. All right, so I thought what would be a good Snyder-related episode to do, and I thought let's do one on the new gods in the multiverse. Now, I know the new gods movie was just canceled, but they mentioned them in the Snyder <laughs> Cut, so we kind of have, so we're going to talk about them now. So I actually prepared, I actually prepared a nice little PowerPoint. This is how prepared I am for this episode. Let me pull this up. Lad, can you see it? Uh, yeah. Okay. Play from the start. Let's do this. All right. So we're going to talk about new gods in the multiverse. So, so let's start with the multiverse. Here's an, an image of the multiverse from like one of the worst DC stories of all time called Convergence. It was just really confusing. All right. So anyway, let's get started. All right. So, so where did the term multiverse come from? So the term was coined by William James as a form of moral or, or, or relativism. It's like how Lad and I have, di have di um, a, a different set of morals. So we're gonna th think through things differently. That's basically how that works. Then you have Max- Yeah, I uh, think that uh, Wonder Woman and Batman should be together and Jared thinks that Batman- Exactly, uh, actually, that, exactly. All right, <laughs> so you have a uh, max tag marks four uh, um, uh, uh, levels and we're gonna deal with level three. So that what this is, okay. So whenever you made a decision, lad, that you create an alternate reality where you made the opposite um, choice. It's like, uh, okay, so imagine this. So you, you take a six-sided die from like a D&D &D game and you roll it. As soon as it lands, yep. you have created actually six alternate realities. Okay, cool, cool. That's basically the idea. That, uh, uh, that's the, ul the alternate reality theory. And then, mm -hmm. it, and then interesting fact, everyone has, has been exposed to the multiverse at some point. If you've ever read a story about alternate realities, You've encountered yeah. a multiverse. There's a Star Trek episode where an alternate Captain Kirk and Mr. Spock come on the Enterprise. I just actually heard about that recently. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Anytime you're dealing with alternate realities, alternate timelines, it's like th uh, that show Man in High Castle where the Nazis won World War II. That's a multiverse. Yeah. <clears throat> so anyway, next. Okay, so here is, uh, uh, here is some Earths from the multiverse. So what you have is, so you got Earth 2. Earth, so what DC did is that they published a lot of their guys. Hang on, I gotta get some water. So they published, <laughs> and by the way, guys, all of these slides will, will, will be able to be viewed on YouTube at, at Comics League Network. So please check out our YouTube channel, shameless plug. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so Earth 2, that's like the World War II era DC heroes. And what I mean by that is that so when DC first started pu publishing, th th this is when you had like Jay Garrick, The Flash, um, Alan Scott, Green Lantern. So after World War II, comics kind of um, s suffered a fall in readership because you had like guys coming back from the war and, th and th they don't have time to read comics. And plus a lot of these, at this point, we were getting into the more of the scientific era of people's interests. So when you tell someone he gets his powers from inhaling the fumes of hard water, <laughs> that's how Jay Garrett got his powers. Yeah, even sense I'm to like, me. even I'm like, what? That makes hard more, water. Although I will say that makes more sense than internet gas. Barely. All right, but anyway, so DC reboot. Uh, so DC brought in editors like Julie Schwartz, and they like rebooted a lot of the characters. Like this is where you get Barry Allen and Hal yes. Jordan. Now, yes. people are wondering what happened to the other Flash and yeah. Green Lantern. And this is where you get the story Flash of Two Worlds, 
where Barry vibrates into Earth 2. It turns out what DC did off panel is they took all the World War II heroes and put them on Earth 2. In other words, the JSA, Jay Garrick, all those guys, Earth 2. Everyone that, that Lad and I know are on Earth Prime or Earth 1. So I see. Also, so also you have Earth 3. Earth 3 is basically Earth, except the moralities are inverted. What I mean by that is that the Justice League becomes the crime syndicate of America. And, and basically Lex Luthor is the leader of the Justice League. And, and he comes to our reality to recruit the League to fight the crime syndicate. Mm. You have Earth 11, which is basically Earth, except all of the ge um, genders for the heroes are switched. So you have Aqua Woman, Super Woman, Wonder Man, probably. <laughs> Wonder Man. Earth 22 is the Kingdom Come universe from the amazing Kingdom Come story. We have to cover that story at one point in the, in the show. Art by Alex Ross, amazing. Earth 29, lad, is the bizarro world. And yes, it is in the shape of a cube. Oh, that's that's good. I like that. Yeah, yeah. And then Earth 30 is the red sun Earth, which is, yeah, when Superman landed in the Soviet Union by accident. Oh, and man. He, and he grows up to be a, a tool of uh, of Stalinist US, USSR. And once oh, again, boy. Earth 52 is the new 52 Earth. I so in see. other words, this is basically a breakdown of a select few worlds. There's like, I think it's like Earth 6 is the Stan Lee uh, universe where like he rebooted a lot of these characters. Yeah. There's like a lot of different Earths and, it's a, and it keeps getting updated all the time. So anyway, and this is pre-Omniverse, by, uh, by the way. I'll go into the Omniverse in a later episode. That needs its, whole, uh, its own episode. All right, so you have these beings called the new gods. So here's how, how, this, how these guys were created. And by, so Lad was telling me he has some questions that he will be interspersing throughout the episode. So new gods. So th there was this world called God World, where, which is a world outside of reality that was occupied by the old gods. And then, so there was a Ragnarok-like scenario where it was split in two. Now, over time, through science, the two halves formed two new worlds. And then over time, life evolved on these worlds. Now, what were these planets? Actually, so he he here's a map of the multiverse, and here are the two worlds, Apocalypse and New Genesis. In other words, they used to be one world. Mm-hmm. So as we get there, so so apocalypse is ruled by by dark side, and it's and it's like it, it's a totalitarian rule. In, in other words, whatever dark side says goes. On New Genesis, which is over here, it's kind of like the the depiction of of heaven. And it's the whole idea about how uh, on apocalypse it's like it's a cruel world, and on New Genesis it's a utopia. And the two people have been at war with each other ever since Darkseid engineered the death of High Father, the, the leader of New, New Genesis' wife. Hmm. It sounds like something Darkseid would do. So, Euxus, and we saw him in the Snyder Cut. So, Euxus is the son of the new god, Yuga Khan. Actually, old god, really. Uh, well, actually, new god, yeah. So, what happens is that he, so he was the architect of that war. I told you about that. So he started killing off all the other gods and absorbing their powers. So finally, Yuga Khan was going to kill Euxus. And then Euxus ends up killing him and absorbing his power, becoming Dark Side. Oh, really? And that is why in the Snyder Cut, when Dark Side first shows up in, in, in like the history lesson scene, he doesn't have the red eyes or anything like that because that's pre him get uh, absorbing all those powers. Oh, so he just like Euxus then, or no? Yuga Khan. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. He was uh, Yuga Khan is his father. Okay, got it. Yeah. So and, and then he absorbed also a a power source called the Omega Effect, and that's how he has the Omega beams and all that. Nice. So, so this is pretty much explaining why Darkseid is like ridiculously powerful. Mm -hmm. 
So here are some of his minions. So you have Calabac, which is Darkseid's son. We have Steppenwolf, which we all know if you've seen the Snyder Cut. The Female Furies, which you have Lashina, uh, Mad Harriet, G Guillotina. I think the other one is Bernadette. But, but basically, they're, they're like Apocalypse Strike uh, Shock Forces. Then over mm. here... We have Fury. Now, Fury was introduced in the Earth 2 series that was like in the New 52 era. And she is actually pretty interesting. She is the daughter of Steppenwolf and Earth 2 Wonder Woman. Hmm. Now, what happens is that Steppenwolf ends up dying in that series. And then Fury ends up turning to our side and then becoming the Earth 2 version of Wonder Woman. Hmm. So she replaces her mom. That's kind of cool. Yeah, no, it's it's a really good a good series. So then you have New Genesis. So who who are are the New G Genesis people? Well, you have Orion. Now Orion is the son of Darkseid, but as I mentioned in the Darkseid War storyline, so to prevent a war that would destroy all reality, High Father and Darkseid made a pact. They swapped sons because they figured they weren't going to attack each other if their sons were on the other planet. Darkseid does not care, I guarantee you. He does not care. <laughs> so Orion be becomes a good guy, and then if that, if, and then he shows up in like Justice League Unlimited and such. And then you have High Father is this uh, Santa Claus uh, guy. <laughs> And then you have the Tomorrow People, which they showed up in the Young Justice series. What they do is, th is they can combine into one being, kind of like Voltron. Like Transformers? <laughs> like Transformers, yeah, kind of. So that's what I got in terms of the new gods. Sorry, so uh, nice. you, you have any questions for me? Yeah, yeah. So you said that Steppenwolf is actually like, you know, Dark Side's, Dark Side's, uncle. Dark Side's uncle. So that means he's... Um, was it Yuxin Khan's brother or something Yuk like that, maybe? Yeah, he's y Yuga Khan's brother. I see. That's kind of trippy. So these guys, so, and you mentioned the old gods briefly. What, what are they, are those supposed to be like, like Zeus and all those other people, or that's something else? Um... That's been kind of back and forth in the comics a lot because all I know is that in this story, the old gods lived on the uh, uh, on the uh, apocalypse new Genesis world when there was one world, and I then see. when it split, they died. Okay, so it might just now, be kind of something else. It could be where they didn't die, but but they became the Greek gods. It could have been that. Right. It's just. So far, I'm not really that. Uh, 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 I'm looking it up right now. Old guys, yeah. DC Comics. It, it may vary it. also, you know. It could vary, yeah. Okay. The old gods uh, of the first world were an ancient race whose destruction led way to the gods of Earth. And the other, okay, okay, okay. So the way it works is that the Greek gods were like creations or, or like de descendants of the old gods. I see. Because when you think about it, actually, the Greek gods are just uh, um, metahumans who people thought were gods because they'd never encountered them before. Right. Yeah, so th that's that. All right, so any other questions? Nope, I think that covers it pretty well. Mm -hmm. All right, wait, wait. So yeah, so Dark Side is a real a hole. Yeah, I guess, I guess so. I mean, just a little bit. Yeah, he kill, he kill, uh, he basically killed his entire family except for Steppenwolf. And I, I, I get the feeling Steppenwolf only follows his, uh, his uh, nephew because he's so scared of Dark Side, which everyone yeah. kind of is. When yeah. you see, when you see apocalypse and like, uh, in, in, in like the comics, it's basically a work camp. Mm -hmm. We yeah, kind of briefly, yeah, we kind of briefly saw it in um in Dark Side War when we went over it, but but basically there is a group of like of, of rebels who are f fighting against Dark Side 
on Apocalypse. It's just there's not that much because no one has the will to do that. Yeah. And then, uh, so and what Dark Side does is he is he, here's the thing: New Genesis and Apocalypse exist outside of the multiverse. That's why there's only one Dark Side. I see. So what he does is he goes to di- to a different Earths, like in the New Fifty Two in Justice League Origin. While Darkseid was attacking Earth Prime, Steppenwolf was going after Earth Two, mm. and that's okay. where he kill he kills Wonder Woman, Superman, and Batman, and then the and then the other um and then the people on that Earth form a new ju- Justice League called the Wonders, and I think called it's called the CW. The <laughs> on the CW, I guarantee you, it's gonna be a, C- a CW show soon. Oh, no, no, it's called the CW because they don't have <laughs> one or Superman. Oh, I guess they have Superman now. They have Superman, yeah. and they almost had Batman. Almost, yeah. But yeah, so, so yeah, they exist outside of the multiverse. That's why there's not supposed to be a rebooted Darkseid. I see. And because when Darkseid dies, he kind of like reborn, so you kind of have you know, like... He, he can't die. Yeah. You can only... To destroy his body, but he's actually like a spirit, kind of. Oof. So there, that's why whenever someone goes, who would win, Dark Side or Thanos? Uh, Dark Side every time. You kill yeah. the, the Thanos's body, he's gone. You go for the you head, for the he's head. dead. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He, he's dead. That's it. That is one hundred percent it. You kill Dark Side, he will get another body. Yeah. It happened before because there was this war on New Genesis. Uh, between New Genesis and Apocalypse, Darkseid died, and his spirit was sent down into this mob boss, and, then, and that's where you get boss Darkseid from Final Crisis. I see. And then he found the anti-life equation, w- which is actually a mathematic equation that, if solved, releases it uh, gives one control over all uh, free will. That's what Steppenwolf was referring to when he goes, "The key to all will in the multiverse." Mother. <laughs> <laughs> mother. Okay, Which one is better? The, the anti-life talk or the mother talk? Oh, definitely the anti-life. <laughs> okay, so the formula for the anti-life equation is loneliness plus fear. I mean, bl- 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 actually, it's loneliness plus alienation plus fear plus despair plus self-worth. Uh, I mean, uh, actually, wait, it's loneliness plus alienation plus fear plus despair plus self-worth divided by mockery divided further by condemnation and divided by misunderstanding times guilt times shame times failure times judgment n equals y where y equals hope and n equals folly uh love equals lies life equals death and self equals dark side that's no wonder actual... it takes him so long to get this wait that's the, that's act, that's what it is in the canon yeah that's what it is. You're not joking. <laughs> I am not kidding you. I, what? I thought, it was like, I, I mean, when they say equation, you know, the, it kind of was a bit vague. And I know the flash equation, they have like BX something parentheses. Sure, whatever. But like, they actually took like the time for, there's a whole bunch of like sad and depressing adjectives. Stuff I know. Together. That's the equation. Yeah. Speed and force specifically equation. in English, which dark yeah. side shouldn't really know. The speed force equation is is 3x2 times 9yz times 4a equals question mark. Nice. But geez, yeah, that's why it takes it takes him so long to to find the anti-life equation. (laughs) Can't imagine, yeah. But in, in the story Final Crisis, he actually does do it and takes over Earth. And then he, like, he turns Wonder Woman, Catwoman, Batwoman, Huntress, and like basically all the female characters into Furies. Okay. And like everyone serves Darkseid on Earth. And that, that's basically where we get that whole story, which is kind of hard to understand. Yeah, it's Grant Morrison, and I love the guy. He's he's like in my top five favorite writers. But his stories, you actually have to think through. Uh huh. Yeah. I see. And ironically, right. he wrote the story in which we got the map of the multiverse. Oh boy. What I forgot to mention is that uh, 
is that there's also a dark multiverse where in Ooh. Dark Knight's Metal, where basically what it is is so you have the World Forge where all these different Earths are made. Now what happens is it's manned by, by someone called the Dragon, and who used to be Barbados. So the way it's, it's supposed to work is that if there's a world where stuff is going wrong, you're supposed to destroy it. But what uh, Barbados was doing is he was stockpiling them and created his own multiverse. Saving it to do later. Procrastinating. Yeah, Dark Knight's metal. <laughs> Death metal. <laughs> yeah. This is where we have like the Batman who laughs, Red Death, Devastator Batman, uh, Lois Lane becomes the Eradicator. Um, let me see. What else do we have? Uh, Batman who became Hush. Mm. it's like yeah there's lots of different really it's basically where we get the tales of the dark multiverse i see and then uh so you have that uh, that side of the multiverse what's kind of funny is that in the comic when they're looking at a map of the multiverse it's this it's legitimately mm. this and then when they, they say do. there's a dark multiverse all they do is they take it and turn it over like in uh, Stranger Things. Exactly. That's pretty pretty much what they do. But yeah, so that's pretty much the multiverse. I hope that's not too confusing. All right, so lad, what's your favorite Earth? Uh, that's a good question. Earth 3, no, sorry. Earth Earth 2, I don't want all like kind of like the Jay quarter Garrick, owls, yeah. right? Jake Garrick. Oh, oh, no, not sorry. the quarter Wait. owls. Okay, so I, I'm thinking, uh, I was thinking of something else. But World 3, Earth 3 is probably really cool. Because, like, there's a lot of, it's a very kind of a little bit similar, but there's some different stuff happening there. It's kind of mm -hmm. weird. Uh, Earth 3 is pretty cool. If you've, see, if you've seen the DC movie Crisis on Two Earths, that's what that is. Okay. It's showing you where, where like, most of the superheroes are bad people. Mm -hmm. And this is where you have Ultraman, uh, Owlman, uh, Superwoman, uh Let's see, Johnny Quick, Atomica, and Deathstorm. And then Lex Luthor is the only superhero, and he's the Shazam named Mazash, which, oh, is, sh Shazam which is Shazam powers. backwards. Nice. That, I didn't know he had Shazam powers on that earth. Yeah, and his is kind of added to it where he could absorb everyone else's powers. That's pretty cool. They actually had the multiverse in the Lego Batman 3 game because I mean the, the Lego Super Villains game because in that one the crime syndicate shows up. That's true, yeah. So they <laughs> then they come and to Earth Apocalypse is on that. Oh really? We can go to Apocalypse. That's pretty oh yeah I remember yeah that was pretty fun hanging out on Apocalypse. <laughs> yeah and Apocalypse is also where Doomsday is from supposedly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm Lego goes surprisingly in depth in their lore of the. Oh my genres. gosh, I was surprised too. It's like I'm looking at their cast of characters that they have. It's yeah. like Dexter, the 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 Chipmunk Green Lantern, the Anti Monitor. I'm like, yeah. what? They have like 200 characters and a lot of obscure stuff. It's like they go they go insanely all out. It's surprising, yeah. right? For like. It's like in the in the superheroes two game for Marvel. It's like basically, is there anything that's even remotely associated with Marvel? It's in there, except for the Squadron Supreme. I'm really pissed off about that. They've never mm -hmm. been in a Lego game. We need to get them. Maybe yeah, has a, the maybe squadron. Hyperion. Maybe Hyperion. Well, Hyperion has been in the Avengers game, but I'm saying the actual other Squadron characters. Oh yeah, definitely. Like there's no yeah, Power Hyperion Princess. Gets because they'd be pretty much Wonder Woman. <laughs> yeah, Hyperion definitely gets most of the attention uh, out of any of them. Fun fact, so Marvel is doing this event that th this year, I'm trying to remember what it's called, Marvel's, I think it's called Age of Heroes or something like that. Well, let me see this. I'm trying to see what's this new, I'm, I'm trying to see what's this new event. Because it's basically they turn the Marvel universe into the DC universe. Oh, what? <laughs> Explain. Where, okay, so the Avengers never came together, and the Squadron Supreme is the Earth's premier superhero team. Hmm. And it's like, here's another one 
Peter Parker is basically just the photographer best friend of Hyperion. Huh. I'm like, you're not even trying here, Marvel. This is ridiculous, guys. <laughs> hey, listen, okay? Uh, oh, it's called Heroes Reborn. But it's like, uh, uh, it's so, it's hilarious. And they're using like the, the, the character like armor designs that are pretty much make them Justice League ripoffs. Wonder really? Woman armor on, high, on Power Princess. Everyone's be like, come on, Marvel. Well, at, at least, here's the thing. Marvel has now admitted they can't be DC, so they are just going to copy DC. <laughs> so there That's you go. There you go. Yeah. Hey, listen, maybe they'll do a better, they'll actually have some, if they do some like uh, squadron movies, maybe they'll actually get to continue their vision instead of getting cut short for the second, third movie. Release the Russo cut of Squadron the, Supreme. Yeah, the Russo cut. All right, so Lyle will tell you as a Marvel like nerd, Marvel has a multiverse, although it's not nearly as small as this one. Oh yeah, Marvel, Marvel just kind of, they have a lot of different Earths and they don't count them like from one to 52. They, they just have a whole bunch of just random numbered Earths. Like the main, the main, I guess now I'm covering the Marvel universe. You might as well, um, I was gonna tell you to do that anyway. Yep, the Marvel multiverse. Starring lecture uh, aficionado Lad Brown, Doctor <laughs> Lad Brown, that is, and Marvel. The main Marvel universe is designated as Earth six one six, and this is where we see just like the standard storylines as Peter Parker, Tony Stark, and lots of other characters. Kind of like the modern comics and some of the classic stuff as well, and. A lot of there's a lot of different Earths for just even like small one-off comics or just random stuff. They just throw them on different Earths. Like the Marvel Cinematic Universe technically has a, a designation number. I think it's like zero 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 six or something. I thought it was it was sixteen ten because technically the ultimate one is is the MCU. Oh uh, yeah, the Ultimate Universe is uh, yeah six. 6110 uh but they actually have i think i think mcu actually has its own number but yeah it's very really? much like yeah they I, I mean i saw it on marvel wiki at one point i'm not sure if someone just put it there or if it's actually like designated that designate that number but it, they, they all have lots of different numbers for the different earths for different stories like all like avengers assemble has a number on the marvel wiki and you know, like how it's a shared universe with a couple other shows. So they, they just kind of just they just have lots of number designations for each thing they do. It, yeah, it's like a lot. I'm like, oh geez. Yeah. Well, because Marvel doesn't do as much of the wide line reboot. Like they'll have like a softer reboot where kind of things just get updated without much explanation. Or there'll be like sometimes a cataclysmic event or something. And they kind of modernize things a bit, but not as much like DC where they kind of just like, you know, clean slate, reboot everything. And so that way they can like, oh, all the other worlds got destroyed. And we can just say there's just, just the 52 worlds that we work with. Marvel kind of just, just kind of goes with the flow and, you know, just does its own thing. Yeah, which is kind of confusing at times. Mm -hmm. But DC used to be that way until I believe it was like, so... What happened with the multiverse is that before it was like a mess. There was like so many different Earths. So that's when Crisis on Infinite Earths happened. And the purpose was that of that was to abolish the multiverse. We're not going to do it. Everyone's on one Earth. That's mm -hmm. it. That's all we're doing. And they did that for about 20 years or so. For, for about, yeah, 20 years or so. Uh, until th they decided, we want the multiverse back. So what they did is um is they did a story called infinite crisis where it restored the multiverse that right was overall the effect of of the uh of the event what's kind of funny is that basically the uh, um the two metal events technically qualify as crises because 
with DC, crisis basically means the multiverse is being changed in some way. And there was <laughs> very changed in both of those events. Yeah. Now with the Omniverse, I'm gonna try and br briefly go over that. With the Omniverse, which what DC's new thing they're operating under means everything has happened, everything matters. There's no arguments about whether or not anything is canon or anything, mm -hmm. which I like. I actually do like that because there are a few things uh, like, remember, as Lad and I have talked about, we were kind of brought into, com I, I, I don't know about, about you, Lad, but I really got into comics in the new 52 era. I yeah, liked I it did. a lot. Yeah, mm -hmm. same. Yeah, and, and it's like, because that was like Superman, Wonder Woman. That's where I first saw that. That's why I saw like younger superheroes. And like, yeah. really like a dark side war was a new 52 story. So, and that's where you get the Snyder. Uh, that's where I think Snyder gets like some of his inspiration because remember the league in origin was formed to fight dark side and all but green Lan and even and excluding green lantern that was the lineup for the movie mm -hmm. that was the the lineup that was intended for the actual good movie but uh so uh, obviously i really very much enjoyed uh the the, um, the new 52 i know a lot of fans didn't like a lot of the changes but i don't know i did too so what they did is rebirth was kind of to to sort of merge the new 52 world with the old world so what they did is they basically decanonized a lot of things most of the stuff that i liked like superman wonder woman and all that <laughs> so then when so that, that then the omniverse happens and as it turns out everything's now canon so i'm like thank mm -hmm. you death metal so now Superman, anything from the comics that you liked is canon. It happened. It matters. Mm -hmm. That's why Scott Snyder had a sticky on his computer that said, everything matters. Nice. So I'm like, hey, that's actually really great because you know what you do? You make all the fans happy about that now. Yeah. It was being interpreted kind of as they're doing away with their continuity, which they're never going to do that. They're never going to do that because fans like having that overarching story. It's just what they're doing is they're making it so uh, I, I think what they're doing, I mean, granted, there are some things that kind of contradict stuff that's happening now, but I think what they're doing is they're telling the fans, you decide when all this stuff takes place. Kind mm -hmm. of like how Marvel do does it, because the way Marvel does their timeline is they don't necessarily tell you how much time passes between like story to story. Like the Demon in a Bottle for Iron Man could have happened like last month. So uh, uh, that's how, how, how they justify they've been publishing comics for like years and years and years and years and years, but their characters don't get old. Right, yeah. DC just, just, just reboots all the time because Marvel has never done, like Lad said, Marvel has never done a DC style reboot because when DC reboots, see Flashpoint and everything yeah. afterwards. The new 52 was basically pretend like we never published anything. Right, yeah, it's... It's kind of confusing, right? Because of the, you know, you expect the characters to age, but they kind of stay the same. And sometimes there's many like a character's own universe, like just like a character's comic line gets kind of like reset a bit, but not the entire universe. Like I know there's storylines where Peter Parker gets older and he has a family, and then like he kind of like wishes it away, and like yeah. he he loses, you know, it's his status quo changes. Wish. Yeah, and, and, he, yeah. and he gets back in, you know, he's in, and then he's a high schooler again or something or in college. Yeah, because what happened um, was at that point, I think Aunt May, this is after he revealed his identity to the world in Civil War. And by the way, it's the most controversial event among Spider Man fans, myself included, because what happened is that so P Peter Parker and Mary Jane finally got married, and then Mary, and then Aunt May was dying. So Spider-Man made a deal with the actual devil because that always works out really well for, for yeah, people. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> Ask yeah. Ghost Rider how that went for him. Yeah. But, but so the devil basically made it so Aunt May is not going to die, but the marriage is wiped from existence. Mm -hmm. And everyone hated that story. They wanted him to like kind of just grow up a little bit, I guess. Yeah. Stay married. Yeah. And then they so they kind of just made it, it didn't happen. 
and well, I kind of like it, it. Not that it didn't happen, but it was like a like it had been erased. So then he was back. Like I think if they made it, he was back in high school. So sometimes they do stuff like mm-hmm. that with some of those younger characters where they their personal of you know universe you could call it gets mm-hmm. reset. But the overall continuity remains the same, and no one really kind of acknowledges the fact that maybe like he's younger now. Kind of just kind of keeps going on, you know? Yeah, but. I actually am of the opinion that Marvel should do a big reboot at this point because their universe is so big and expansive, which is good. I'm not knocking that. What I'm saying is that there are times where it gets really convoluted to, to the point where like stories are directly contradicting each other to the point where it makes the whole thing like a little hard to read. So I think at this point they should clean it up a little bit. Oh, yeah, I see what you're saying. I mean, well, they have done a few things where it's not like a reboot of everything, but, you know, like Ultimate Universe, when they set that publishing lineup, you know, where it was specifically like modern versions of all the heroes, they kind of, you know, that did last for, I think like five or 10 years or something like that, where they published those comic lines up, you know, modern versions of all their characters, which a lot of the MCU gets its ideas from. And that was, I think, okay. I, you know, it was kind of like a reboot, you could call it, but I think they still had their regular comics going. And then eventually the regular comics kind of, uh, you know, absorbed a lot of those ideas. And then they just got rid of the Ultimate Universe and kind of merged it with the original one. So that, that, that way they can kind of just, you know, keep all the same general continuity, you know. That's they had the, they, they also did like the, 2099 storyline where there's a lot of you know of you know all the heroes but it's in the future you know so uh you know spider-man 2099 they have lots of future versions of characters uh you know running around which is kind of cool and it was supposed to be set in the future originally but then they they've changed it since then to make it that 2099 happens in its own separate universe which, I mean, I like that because here's the thing. Kingdom Come did that. Kingdom Come was supposed to be a dark future of the DC universe because at that time, DC was super dark, m- right. more so than they are now. But so Mark Wade wrote that as a warning. Hey, this is where it's going. So eventually, they just made it its own Earth. Oh, which, cool. Again, pr- pretty dope. I mean, Deceased is its own Earth. The thing about the multiverse is that you can tell any story you want, any story, mm-hmm. which is why, again, yeah. when Warner Brothers said they want a multiverse, but not Zack Snyder, we're like, hello, <laughs> we just said multiverse. Yeah. Don't yeah. use the term then. Just say it's all on one earth. And then, and then, yeah, you have more of a claim to that. The nightmare stuff is dark multiverse. They never specified dark multiverse. That would be See, here's the thing. It's supposed to turn out well at the end, so it's not a dark multiverse. Because in the dark m- multiverse, all the worlds end up terribly, no matter how hard you try and fix it. Oh, I see. Legitimately, the Blackest Night Earth uh, in the in the uh, dark multiverse, here's what happens in this one. So Sinestro becomes a Black Lantern and a White Lantern at the same time. So ends up happening. Their idea is take Dove to like, I I think it's the source wall and I'll explain what the source wall is in a second. And then she'll release the the source and then it'll like reboot the world. They do that except Dove gets killed and Sinestro's life essence can't be used to reboot the world. So they use Lobo and it ends up creating a Lobo world. Oh no. So, so basically, so here's what the source wall is. The source wall is what d- it, it, it divides the universe from whatever is beyond it. Mm-hmm. It's made up of beings that have tried to harness what's called the source or the, the source of all life. Like Yuga Khan is, is in the source wall. Perpetua was in the source wall. Yeah, to, uh, uh, Darkseid's father. And then in some stories, Darkseid himself has been sealed in the source wall. So what's on the other side of the source wall then? Is That's it like- a good question. It has been kind of, so gr- according to Grant Morrison, who wrote it, he would, he, he thinks, uh, he, he, um, in his mind, it's the Marvel universe. Really? Like they're right in, uh, next to each other. It's not official canon, but th- that's the way he sees it. 
which would be interesting. That's why when the source wall breaks at the end of Metal, we have a crap ton of, uh, of Marvel r- r- ripoff characters coming in. At least, that, at least that's what I think. That's, I see. I can see that. Mm-hmm. I, I can see that. They, yeah, they've never really showed what's on the other side of the source wall. By the way, the Rock of Eternity, that's outside the multiverse. Out the, oh, wait. So outside, not even the apocalypse and all that's inside the multiverse, yeah. right? Yeah. The Rock, the <laughs> just the <laughs> Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Is outside <laughs> the, the Rock of Eternity. And then yeah. inside is the House of Heroes. Now, what this is, so there's actually a multiversal Justice League made up of, of basically analogs from all the different Earths, and their job is to make sure the multiverse does not blow up. Oh, it's really? funny because they must not be a good team because it's blown up like four times. Yeah, right? What gives? What? You couldn't stop the, mo- the anti-monitor or anything like that? Yeah. And then in between the worlds it is this thing called the bleed, which is basically just energy be- it's it's the space between the different worlds mm-hmm. and we see a little bit of that in death metal because one of the issues is they're going to to the the different earths to try it because perpetua pu- puts tuning forks on each of the planets and then they start feeding her energy so their plan is let's blow up these tuning forks on all these different earths so they go to like earth three the bizarro earth they go to all these different, yeah. different earths So that's that. I'm trying to see what else can we talk about. All right. So actually, let's talk about Perpetua. So her deal was, so she's of the beings called the Hand. And we've talked about them in like, actually, I don't think we've really talked about the Hand. I'm so, confused still. I don't understand what the, the Hand people okay. are. So do you know how <clears throat> in DC lore, the idea is that at the beginning of time, a blue hand reached in and formed the universe? Something they kind of like showed that, this yeah. in JLU. Yeah, then it's supposed to, you're not supposed to look at that happening. Yeah, yeah, exactly and then, that. And then that's it gets a hand. like leaked on YouTube or something, maybe. <laughs> Apparently. So that's the hand. The hand were the beings who created everything in DC. I One see. of them was Perpetua. Her sons were the monitor the and the anti-monitor. So what yeah. happened was, and then I'm trying to think of who else was. Is, is it like Stormbringer or something like that? Or no, that's that the hammer. No, it's like World Builder, World Forger, World Forger. I think so. Hang on, Perpetua. All right, so I'm trying to see. She created the first generation of multiverse crisis energy. Maybe it's a Mobius. It's a thing that happened. Uh, let me see. So basically, what happened supposedly is okay. I think Krona is one of the beings. Uh, all right, so anyway, she was, so she had three sons and, 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 and two of them are the modern and the anti-modern. That, that's the point here. So mm-hmm. what happened was, so she starts to, to go beyond her original purpose and the other hand members trap her in the source wall, but she's still conscious this entire time. So what she does is she corrupts the anti-monitor and that's where you get crisis on infinite earths. Mm, I see. She, she wants to blow up the multiverse. So after he's destroyed, she somehow engineers the events of death metal with with Barbados. Actually, I think Barb- Barbados is her. It, it, uh, yeah, but Barbados is like one of her acolytes, and he takes a, and the end result of death of of metal. Actually, the first metal is that the source wall is destroyed and she escapes. Mm. So. And then that's where we get get to death metal a few years later, where she, uh, where she and the Batman who laughs, she imbues him with like cosmic power. He takes over Earth, reshapes the continents to make a bat because it's Batman. Nice. And and she she starts gaining power. Her idea is she wants to like destroy all the multiverses and reboot it. So in other yeah. words, she wants to uh, a, a reboot. <laughs> The bad guy wants a reboot. So anyway, so she, she actually gets destroyed by the Batman who laughs, who then has the powers of Manhattan. I see. So she's dead. Thank God. I'm really hoping that she stays dead. I, I, I hope that they let her and the Batman who laughs die because it's really <laughs> annoying to see these two show up all the freaking time everywhere. I'm like, go away. 
Boy. Did we they go get for it. the head? We get, they, they should go for the head. We get it. Oh, man. But yeah, so that's pretty much that. And so that's, uh, that's basically w- 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 what death metal is. All right, so a- any other qu- questions or anything that's, uh, that's um, unclear, lad? Oh, but uh, actually, no. Let me see. What else. Wait, so with the, with the source wall, the source wall is gone now? Yep. So isn't that supposed to protect the multiverse from things outside of it? Yeah, and then throughout the post uh, metal world, they had a couple of the beings come through and start screwing around with everything. I see. I'm trying to find hang on source wall is destroyed. Okay, after the invasion of the dark multiverse, all right, so hang on. After the invasion of the of the dark multiverse by Bar- 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 Barbados and the dark and the Batman who laughs, the source wall was finally broken and Perpetua was free from her prison, the totality which landed on Earth zero after the wall breaking. Okay, so her corporeal form was restored by Lex Luthor with almost with almost six parts of her. Okay, so what happens is that so the, the totality was another was a group of beings that landed on Earth. This was near uh, actually. So, so what happened is that so Scott Snyder did, did a Justice League run, and, and this is where we get the return of the classic cartoon uh, lineup of, of the Justice League, uh, except for, for it's Barry Allen this time instead of Wally West. All right. So, oh, by the way, I think Earth 11 would probably be your favorite Earth lab because that way you can say Lewis Lane. Lewis Lane. Yes, finally. That's probably what, well, uh, th- that's probably the analog. It better be, yeah, Lewis but, Lane. But anyway, so, so Scott Snyder did, did this run for, for Justice League, where it's basically the League and the Legion of Doom competing to see who can get the most of these pieces of power, and then and ends up restoring Perpetua to her former self. I see. And then, uh, let's see. What else can we talk about? Um... So, if the source wall is gone, perpetual is gone, stuff like that, who didn't you say that there's no protection now for the multiverse? Mm-hmm. Yep, that's pretty much it. Anything can come in now, I think. Ooh, that's bad. I feel like for future yeah, yeah, yeah. Events. Well, I mean, it's, it, it seems like whoever it opens the door to a Marvel crossover for going by where Grant Morrison thinks it's on the other side. Yeah. Yeah, the source. I don't think the source wall was ever brought back. I'm looking. Yeah, because I mean, they're gone now. Uh, let me see. Uh, I'm looking, and I want to show the scene again. The patient who was very personally blaming himself and social media for small attacks and violence. Nope, it's still destroyed, apparently. Uh, what? Oh. Yeah, this is not good. Not, not good. So, okay, but, so explain the hand. Can you explain the hand to me? Because I don't understand the hand. They were beings that created all of DC. I see, okay. And didn't you say that they talked with one woman right at the end of... Uh, yeah. So what happens is Wonder Woman meets a hand. Let me pull up that comic actually, because I can pull that and have an extra bigger falling over. All right. So uh, excuse me, folks. I'm just pulling up the last issue of Death Metal. Still trying to complete the collection. You're missing still. Yeah, I still got. I'm on a budget, bro. <laughs> Understandable. All right. So I'm pulling up this comic because th- this is the. Concluding issue to Death Metal. Ooh, vinyl case. All right, so anyway. So what the hand does is it meets Wonder Woman. And Wonder Woman bites the hand that feeds her. No. So they were originally coming back. 
to destroy the entire world, the entire multiverse, wipe it from Wait. existence. I don't see any hands though. Those are people. They're called the hands. I thought they were actually hands, like hand. No. Tape. So the Batman who laughs tries to make a deal with Wonder Woman saying, hey, join with me. We'll take out the hands and I'll give you guys an earth where you can live on and be peaceful. Uh, do you okay. trust the Batman who laughs? So she kills the Batman who laughs. And this last act of like sacrifice because she dies kind mm -hmm. of dies in, in comic books dies and the hand actually saves her that's why i said dies and it's a, <laughs> barely dies basically and then the hand uh, so what the hand does is so it so it it manifests in front of her in a form that she's most familiar with it's his it's her classic look oh nice and she says hey listen so you have to ascend. We're gonna, so we're not gonna destroy the universe. You have shown us there's value. So what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna let you just, we're gonna leave the multiverse alone. But there's also consequences to what went down, but you have to ascend to be this being to, to like protect everyone, I guess. I'm still trying to understand it. Maybe like Eventually, because the source wall is gone now. Maybe so. It's kind of funny because in, in, in the next comic, which is the first Infinite Frontier issue that I I have, one woman says, "Nope." She goes, Wait, no. she doesn't do that. I thought her whole job. It. You had one job. Yeah, she says no, and then eventually it leads to her really dope, like new costume. I'm trying to pull that. I'm trying to get that comic up so I can show you that. Well, first off, as she's go so uh, th this issue is basically DC going through their new everything matters continuity. So the f for the purpose of this one comic issue, they gave her this costume. Interesting. So, and what they did is, I'm opening up this comic, is oh, the so vinyl wrapping. So what DC did so what happens is is Wonder Woman is taken by the specter and given a tour of the new multiverse. Oh, she's hanging out with Arrow? So anyway, this is where we get, so, so she, this is where it shows a, a lot of status quo changes like Hippolyta leaving the island to become the new um, a member of the Justice League. This is where we see like Yara Floor showing up. Mm -hmm. This is where we see the JSA being re uh, like being brought back into continuity. So we have the Teen Titans coming back. S Superboy uh, uh, eventually. Uh, this is where it's revealed to her that Su Superboy will eventually become a dictator. We have uh, Roy Harper, Star Girl, and then so it eventually goes down. As Wonder Woman is given a choice. Okay, you can. Uh, uh, well, first off, also. Wally West ends up being the main Flash now because oh, right. so at the end of Death Metal, they the heroes and villains come together to form an organization that's going to protect the multiverse, and Barry Allen is going to be a member of that team, and Wally West is going to be the main Flash. Okay, so and Wally West has been the Flash for a, like you know the main Flash for a long time. He, he he retires from being the Flash shortly thereafter. Oh, really? I guess they didn't like it. That's what DC, DC hates Wally West. Wally <laughs> West and Dick Grayson. They hate those two characters for some reason. <laughs> so what happens is that Wonder Woman goes, uh, uh, it's, uh, so they ask her, are you ready to, to join us, Diana? And then she goes, okay, so I know th that all my friends and family, they can, um, they can handle things without me. I'm not like needed there. But what she said is, I don't want to join you because it's exciting. I want to see what this new world looks like. So she, she, she does her whole twirl and she gets into this new dope costume. Nice. This is a new Wonder Woman look and I love it. Good look. Yeah, there she is right in the middle. It's pretty cool. Yes, this is so great. And this is where you get like the new J Justice League lineup, which includes Black Adam. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's pretty OP. 
Oh, and then by the way, so at the end of the issue, this is how this thing ends. So Wonder Woman was supposed to f to join a group of beings that that was supposed to watch over all of existence. It has like the, the Spectre, the Phantom Stranger. I, I think uh, I, I think that's Gantt. It's like w one of the Guardians. Uh, let me see. Um, w w the Greek guy. I think that's Hera. Is that Hera? Yeah, I think that's Hera. And uh, High Father. So she leaves and she's like, no, nah, I'm out. She goes back to go hang out with the others, by the way. Aquaman is further like Jason Momoa. They even gave him tattoos. Yeah, <laughs> nice. Is he still looking a little white, though? They need to yeah, I know. I'm waiting. Bit. Give him dark hair. So anyway, that whole group, all those beings are destroyed. What? Spectre, Phantom Stranger, uh, Krona. They're all killed by... This is dark side, but his real form. What? What does that mean? Remember, I told you dark side's like body that we see is just an avatar. Oh, okay, yeah. This is what he actually is like. He just killed all of these powerful beings. Oh man, <laughs> that's an indicator, and that indicates to me that true form dark side, as he's called, is going to be the main bad guy of Infinite Frontier. That's going to be kind of scary. I'm excited for that because we've never really seen true form dark side in action. We've we've heard of him, but ne as far as I know, j j drop in the comments if you guys remember any issue because I'd be very interested in seeing that. But that's basically how powerful dark side really is. He could take out the most powerful beings in the universe. That's why when it comes to Thanos versus dark side, who wins? Uh dark side. <laughs> Yeah. Dark side. There's I mean, no Thanos, competition. Thanos doesn't have any powers except for like maybe kind of strong on his own, you know, like everything is just from, you know, having his armies to control and, you know, the, the infinity stones. Without that, he's just like a really, you know, kind of like strong dude, but that's pretty much it. And I guess smart, but. Yeah, which what's so cool is. So, um, the, the guys that do those like fights um from oh, oh the the death battle guys they did a thanos versus dark side battle so first thing dark side does is he teleports thanos into his universe because the glove doesn't work yeah and then so dark side actually gets kill killed and then he meets true form dark side and true form dark side just disintegrates him oh man it's like there's nothing you can do here yeah, no, you're right. Hang on, so uh, I'm seeing an article here that DC Films wants to reboot the, the Justice League as a multiverse team. But hey, hang on for a second. I want to see some. So I'm, yeah. uh, and, and this is an article from, from Geekosity. I'm not sure if, if this is actually a reputable information. Everything is like going crazy. But apparently, so they want to reboot the, the Justice League as a multiverse team. So when the league returns, their new lineup will be origin from the multiverse. Okay. Be away from the Snyderverse. Uh, however, there will be exceptions to this rule as the Justice League reboot is among them, while upcoming theatrical films like Iron Man Zatanna won't. By the way, there is a, a Zatanna movie, and I'm really excited for that. It meets the same fate as the Trench or the New Gods. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, th that's probably what's going to happen, I'm going to tell you. Or Cyborg or Adam or the Batman movie or the there's a few other ones also. Yeah, Calgary, that's one of the possibly mayor will be the star of the Honestly, I think this is just a, a rumor. I, I I don't think it has any weight to it. I don't think they would do a Justice League from the multiverse. Yeah. That yeah. that is confusing. Yeah. That's confusing for me. And I consider myself a DC comic scholar. That is very confusing. Yes, you're Dr. Like, Zoom. I thought Superman was us. a white I thought Superman was a white guy. Oh, that's just Superman from another Earth. There was an Earth, but by the way, where it's all African American people. Really? Yeah. I'm like, okay, that's because why not? Uh, and was originated in Grant Morrison's uh Final Crisis. It's it's just a little snapshot. Final Crisis. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. That's the one where I I think that's the one where the heroes are made aware of the multiverse. That's uh, just really confusing. The point is that's the one where Darkseid takes over with the anti-life equation. 
Yeah. What the what the real point is is that DC needs to stop having like a multiverse ending threat like every year or maybe every like five years year they now. do a reboot. So, so yeah, that's pretty much what that is. It's a little it's a little too much. Like you can't just hit us with the most extreme like the next cosmic level of power. Like let's just dial it back a little bit and have some more like you know a little bit lower tier threats, and then you can build up to like, something big. You know. That's what they should be. I think all of comics needs to cool off with the events. Yeah, just it's, it's just Please like stop. it's the end of the world again. Like the entire world is blowing up, and the universe, and the and everything, and it's good. It's really annoying because there were times when it's like. Last year they were doing death metal, but at the same time they're also releasing Joker War, and I'm like, what? Uh, I mean, three like jokers, and, and then three Jokers. It's like they have all these events happening at the same time where they can't possibly be happening at the same time. Yeah, I'm like, uh, guys, can you please give me a hand here? <laughs> oh man, this is really annoying. I think a lot and I have had this conversation where stop with the events, let these characters breathe. Yeah, it'd be cool. It'd be cool to have, you know, events are cool, but I, hopefully they, you know, just have some of the individual characters get a little more development. Yes, please. Please, for the love of God. And also, can so I understand the importance of re- representation, but here's an idea. Instead of trying to throw in a black Superman, how about you just build up the African, the great African American characters that DC already has, like Static Shock, Static Black Shock Lightning, or, John uh, Stewart Green Lantern. Oh man, I, so, I, I was looking at a forum thread and people were complaining that that, that DC does not like promote their, their African American characters, and I'm like, yeah, put them in a movie instead of replacing all of the other guys. Do you think that? Uh... We're gonna get John Stewart Green Lantern eventually. Oh yeah, he's supposedly he's gonna be the main Lantern in the series. I'm hyped. I remember he was like the first guy I kind of knew. I didn't really know how Jordan made for Super Friends only, but you know John Stewart was like really cool. Yeah, I I started w- with Stewart because remember I I started on on the JLU TV sh- series, and he was like the only Lantern they showed at that point. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But you get my point, right? That if you that you have plenty of other great characters like like that, and you could just easily j- just put them in a good movie, have a good director w- with them, and then you're done. That's all. You're done. Mm, interesting. Yeah, I'm not sure what to think of the the uh, the idea. Or I mean, if they're gonna get rid of Cavill and put like a new person in which might be already what they're planning to do regardless like you know Affleck and uh Hashtag restore the Snyderverse yeah they it seems kind of like a bit convoluted on that end day but here's what I think is going to happen based on Warner Brothers' track record sometime in the future they'll be having a discussion with, with Zack Snyder and then they'll be canceling most of their plans Mm-hmm. We already saw a little bit with the trench and new gods. I think right now Warner Brothers is probably telling them. Uh, I mean, AT and T and HBO Max is probably telling them, uh, "You're doing the the your call Snyder up and tell him to do the Snyderverse." And what they're probably pro- <laughs> and they're seeing <laughs> no one is really excited for any of the other DC stuff coming out. I mean, Suicide Squad looks good. I saw the newer trailer, really funny. <laughs> But oh, it's 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 like they announced like all right guys we heard everyone you guys want more Justice League Justice League two and three so we are bringing in Josh Whedon to continue his vision for Justice what League vision? two and three. But by the way, <laughs> th- that's a Superman movie. I'm gonna make a, a a guess. It's not gonna happen. I think Warner Brothers be- makes all these announcements and guess what happens. They kind of, yeah, they do get kind of pushed aside. Because guess look, what? I was... They'll delay it first, like they did with New Gods and Trench, and guess what happens? Disappeared. Okay, so I was I was contemplating this. Like, 
is it is it really that bad if if they kind of change a way that we know a character for a long time you know because sometimes when they update a character like batman and this is like a hypothetical question uh the, you know like batman when they update him from like you no know, classic or made a little campy or you know sometimes more serious like the you know uh keaton movies and then they've made him a lot darker for you know uh the dark knight return uh you know the dark knight mm-hmm. trilogy and everything they really changed the character the way he was portrayed and everything like that now is it really as big of a change to make say superman like who's normally portrayed as the white person portray him as like a as a Here's dark, you have to dark skin person Here's it's not a bad thing I'm not against that I'm just saying if DC because I constantly see people on Twitter complaining that uh, that DC is not doing enough to promote its actual Af- it's it's African American characters Yeah which I and here's the thing they have some pretty dope characters. Mm-hmm. John Stewart being one of them. Mm-hmm. Black Lightning, Static Shock. I forgot Black Lightning existed. He was so cool. He was in Young Ju- Ju- Justice, dude, and he has his own show. The point is, they have all these great characters. Guys that mm-hmm. I think would do really well in a movie in it right now. And then they take Superman when he's doing really well with Cavill and go, uh-huh. we're just going to throw that out. This is what Warner Bros. is doing. They're taking the stuff that works and throwing it out. Mm-hmm. I, personally, I think the multiverse Justice League is a dumb idea. Like, no brain cell l- level dumb idea because be it's, it's just going to confuse people. And for, first off, with Matt Reeves Batman, it, it, so he's supposed to be the Batman of the multiverse Justice League. You know what that does? It takes away from the overall tone of that movie because it looks like it's just, just a standard cop movie. Now all of a sudden, you're making a cosmic level. Right. Yeah. Is Matt Reeves Batman in the same universe as the Joker movie, or? That's a good question. That's a really I feel good like they, question. They have it similar- might be. It could be. I mean, they have such dark tones. I feel like it would work together, the two of them. That'd but... be so cool. That'd be so cool if basically the Joker was the was the prequel to Matt Reeves' Batman. Because yeah. it ends with Bruce Wayne's parents getting killed. Yeah. Do you think do you think they're making Batman too dark? Like, like look how the progression of Batman has been. It's you know, Batman. Like, I know, I know. Batman is dark. I know, I know. And and like I know I I'm overly sensitive, so maybe I'm not the one to talk. You're but, the one but, that thinks Adam West is the best portrayal of Batman, so you're but, not exactly the best audience here. But listen, Batman, you know maybe like you no know, some of the original movies, you know like Keaton, where you know things are kind of dark, you know they're you know stakes are high. Then the Dark Knight trilogy makes things you know a lot darker and you know like you know edgy, and then we see you know like in the with the DCEU where Batfleck is like pretty Machine dark. He's people. like straight, you know yeah, why? Killing people. That legitimately is Batman from, from the Frank Miller Dark Knight Return series. I see. He just killed that because that's, the, that was the main inspiration behind the Batman, behind Batman v Superman, really, because Batman sticks, that was the comic where Batman Superman first fought. I see. I didn't it was know so that. popular. That it just became a standard rule that whenever Batman and Superman first meet, there will be a battle. Doesn't matter how right. long it uh, it lasts, because as we know in Justice League Origin, it lasted twenty seconds. Right. Uh, also in the movie, it lasted like ten seconds. I don't know how long it actually was. But the point is, at some point they will come to blows. Yeah. Well, okay, and that well, look, look what we have now: Matt Reeves Batman, which is like looks so dark that it's almost like he's like like i know he is supposed to be like almost like a villain but it looks like so like gothic and horror and like super scary like will we it's ever supposed to be a noir crime mo- movie that's why yeah yeah that's true it's supposed to be more annoying uh, yeah like that but will we ever go back to like a less you know extreme dark batman movie or is it always gonna keep progressing like darker and edgier you know I don't think so. I think if anything, it'll stay at this level, but they're not going mm-hmm. back, let me put this way. They're not going back to, to old school Batman and Robin level. And they're sure like as hell this. are not going back to the bat freaking credit card. What's wrong with the bat credit card? 
It's stupid. That's how you get Batman's identity. You 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 just try. Who are you gonna bill for that? <laughs> Do you know there's an episode? Uh, I think it was the first episode of, of the Adam West Batman where Riddler tricks Batman into like attacking him. Like he's so when he does that, Riddler sues Batman, and by doing this, he's gonna force Batman to go to court and have to reveal his identity oh, because you know he's going to court. That sounds so like a plot that thing. would be from that show. <laughs> and legal like, battles, and, riveting. So <laughs> I think he finds a way to get out of it, but like, yeah, he set it up. You know, uh, there was there's a little bit of thing there, but. <laughs> That, yeah but like i'm not saying it needs to be funny like that but like i mean does does batman always need to be like super dark like i mean for right now that's kind of his status quo yeah i guess so i i don't think at any point they'll be changing it i mean let me put it this way if it is it will very much surprise me but likely it's gonna stay at least at this dark level i mean let me put it this way ben Affleck like batman was dark even for batman standards like yeah. the the darkest i had seen at that point was like the chris nolan batman movie mm-hmm. but then again well here's the thing batman in those movies was portrayed as like he must be a symbol of hope oh uh-uh, that's the other guy <laughs> that's the other guy you're supposed to be the symbol of justice and fear yeah i know i mean but the thing is yeah yeah i know what you mean yeah that was my problem with those movies they took too many creative like diversions like talia al ghul hates batman since when you she know, has a always. kid with him you know they they've kind of been off and on she refers to him as beloved. I uh, do don't call that, and it's not like sarcastic or anything like that. I knew Lotla was going to challenge me on that one. It's not sarcastic. So I'm like, uh, uh dude. But Liam Neeson, Liam Neeson as <laughs> he's constantly trying. Well, the, Liam Neeson as Razal Ghul. Yeah, that was fantastic. <laughs> uh, Tom Hardy as Bane. That, even though it wasn't a, a Spanish guy like it's supposed to be, still love that. Mm-hmm. that T- was a good uh, was it? Bane. Heath Ledger's Joker. Okay, let's just say oh. the bad guys are like really good. Bad guys trilogy. are fantastic. <laughs> and yeah. Christian Bale was good as a Bruce Wayne. I did not like mm-hmm. him as a Batman. That's fair. Because I didn't like the. Where's the other Charles Dolan? Where is he? Where is he? <laughs> I hated that. Where's Harvey? Where is he? Where? Yeah, I hated that. It's like all these trailer guys you made fun of it. They're like, watch Batman's ongoing battle with throat cancer. Oh, boy. But I feel like he has a bit of that. No, Does he it? has a voice changer. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, he just, that's it's just like it's like deeper, kind of, like disrupted and all that stuff. Yeah, but it's like that's why I like Ben Affleck a little more because he's like, okay, that makes sense. Not <laughs> where is this going? <laughs> oh boy, yeah. So it was. I'm like, okay, guys, I get it. Okay, you're. I get it. <laughs> You had a little too much to, to drink last night, Batman. You've been smoking too many cigarettes. We get it. Although the Batmobile Actually, that, was pretty dope. That happens in the first episode also of the Adam West. He gets like, <laughs> they, they, he orders orange juice when he's like infiltrating like a, uh, like a, like a club with why like, not? you know, the bad guys. Uh, it's like, yeah, it's a club. And so he orders an orange juice, which is like very noble thing for Batman to do, to order an orange juice at like, <laughs> at like a bar, right? And then they actually like put like, like I don't know, like alcohol in it or something, so that he gets like he, you know, he's kind of like knocked out, he gets and drunk, that they, kind of, they, yeah, and so that they can they capture Robin and Riddler gets away, and so he's gonna drive off in the Batmobile, but you can tell he's drunk, and the police officers tell him to, you can't go in this. <laughs> they pull and he's over like, the Batmobile. He, well, but yeah, they don't, well they don't pull over before he drives <sighs> off. They're like Batman, you're in no condition to drive like this. And he's oh, like, man. I got to get Robin. And it's like, oh, no, man, this is so you're good. right. You're right. I can't, I can't go like this. And he kind of like, you know, drunkenly gives them the keys. And that's like the end of the, end, he the gives first them the episode. keys to the Batman. Yes. Yeah. This is the, literally no. Okay, joke. now I have episode. to watch this show. This is the first episode. All this random stuff. And this is also when he does the infamous Batusi dance. Do you know what the Batusi is? Oh, is that when he's doing this? Yeah, like that and oh kind of like God. waving his hand. That's also <laughs> at the bar. And 
<laughs> is that Dude, after, is that before or after he's drunk? That, that's right before. Right before. <laughs> Right. So in the this... comics, the way that they explain how 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 Bruce Wayne is is at all these events and he and he's seen drinking, but it, but Batman's never drunk. Is that Batman secretly is never is drinking like iced tea or or an alcoholic or a beverage that looks alcoholic, but it's really not. Okay, that's kind of clever. I I never yeah, that's a good question, right? Because he's always out like partying or whatever. That's why he's never drunk driving the Batmobile. <laughs> Now yeah. I have to see that show because I want to see that. I want to see Batman Dude. handing the keys to the Batmobile to cops. That I want to see. Yeah. <laughs> he literally does that. It's so funny. Oh my gosh, that is uh, great. Oh dude, man, that's so- <laughs> it's so funny and it's so weird. Oh boy. That, that is really strange. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, yeah, man, that's but, so good. Oh boy, but yeah, no. The point is, I guess Batman has a lot of different variations of him over the years, eh? And yeah, they're all for, for like a different audience, like the Lego Batman. That's obviously not dark at all. Yeah. I, I, I love wish- where... I love where in, in, in the Lego Batman movie where they do the montage of like uh, Batman's going, when have I ever isolated myself from people? And it's turned out horribly. And Batman's like, okay. Uh, and, and then Alfred like does a montage of like yeah. Batman v Superman. Uh, Batman begins. Batman. <laughs> it's like that time, that time, that time, that time, that time. That was my favorite scene in the movie right there. Yeah. That movie uh, was so perfect like it wasn't even like a kids movie it was like it had so many references it was like the like yeah. the ultimate batman movie more than i was it surprised me i was like they put that in there yeah that, that put condiment so king that's condiment what the one time king. you could put condiment king in a movie right they actually used all those random characters and it fit for the tone just like who are these guys you know watch warner brothers will announce a condiment king movie i want condiment king That'd be hilarious. They have a Super Pets movie. Yes. Wait, why don't we have... We should totally get something for DCEU that's like, you know, crypto and... You know, that's all the supposedly... Rest of the dog people. No, no. They announced a Super Pets movie. They announced that. Like, they announced It's a lot part of, things, of their film still. slate. And I'm like, you're putting that on there, but you can't be bothered to do JL 2 and 3 with Snyder. What? They'll do it in dog form. Dog It'll be like a dark side dog. The, uh, dark side is reborn dark, dog. dog. Dark side. Yeah, the Bow Wow beams. Bow Wow. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, yeah. Oh, instead like, of a boom tube, there's a bark tube. Bark tube, yeah. That'd be perfect. Yeah, they're all just like animal versions. Granny, and, like, good, good, granny go- goodness is a poodle. Yeah, perfect. Uh, we should... We, Jack Snyder. You Like, they approach him like, you're allowed Jack to... Sn- your, Jack, Jack, Jack Snyder. Snyder. <laughs> no, no. It says directed by Jack Snyder. <laughs> yeah. Zach, they approach Zack Snyder and they're like, you can make just the two and three, but you have to use the super pets instead Except he, of he makes human. all of them, like, all the most aggressive dogs ever, like Batman's yeah. a Rottweiler. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Superman's a German Shepherd. It's like all the dogs that attack people. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. And it just be, be like so up. Great. It'd be like the up movie where they have like all the dogs Squirrel. with the color. Squirrel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was that'd be so great. Oh, uh, it's like somehow Zatanna's magic goes terribly and turns everyone in the world into dogs. Yeah. It had to be something like that. That'd be so good, but yeah. So, so what were you gonna say, lad, about the Lego Bat- Batman? Oh yeah, it just had so many good references to the rest mm. of the lore, and actually told a really good Batman story just on its own about like mm-hmm. you know Batman isolating himself because he's too scared to lose anyone else. You know, he does that. Right. And I thought that was like really cool that they actually made like that a really big part of the storyline where like, you know, he has to like, you know, you know, uh, bring Robin in. And so like that, I really like that dynamic where Robin is shown to be really important there. I know Padre? Like Bat Family. Padre? Padre. Yeah. I love Padre. that scene, by the way, where he goes to the Fortress of Solitude and they're having like a Justice League reunion party, but no one invited Batman. And you see yeah. like the, the Wonder Twins and I'm like, oh, I look over at Lad and he's like so excited because this means it's the Super <laughs> Friends Earth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that was funny. They had a lot of good stuff. You know, like 
they have a Justice League, you know, convention. They didn't invite Batman. You know? <laughs> I do not invite. Batman. By the way, it's because of Grant Morrison that Batman's on the Justice League. Because what happened is that previous to that, to to when he took over the Justice League book, it was like all these minor characters and Superman. That that's why in like the death of Superman, the the, the Justice League is like Booster Gold, Maxima, and like a, a bunch of other minor characters, Blue Beetle, but nice. not how high May Ray is Ted Cord. It's like all, all the minor characters that really don't have powers against Doomsday. Right. So Grant Morrison is like, wait, what? Why put Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman, put put like all the really big heroes on the <laughs> team, and it will freaking sell. And guess what? Why? It did. That's yeah. why in JL and JLU, that's the lineup of the team. Mm-hmm. Except for, for, for Green Lantern, at the time... It was, at the time, there was only one because this was after Emerald Twilight when Hal Jordan killed all the Green Lanterns. So it was just Kyle Rayner. I see. And, and then you had Aquaman with the beard and long hair and I think the hook hand. Yeah, he had the hook the hook weapon thing. And tattoos. So it was basically Jason Momoa, Aquaman, except I don't think he, I think he still had blonde hair. I'm waiting for them to change his hair color. Do it. Do it, DC. <laughs> yeah. I think we all accepted that, that this is like a really good uh, yeah, that's you know, it. change. That's the one time they can change the character, the way the character looks in a show, and it makes it a whole lot better. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense, that, especially for like Aquaman, because, you know, he's supposed mm-hmm. to be like, you know, from the oceans, you know, maybe like Polynesian or, you know, some other thing. Have like, an islander like a, do that. Right. Yeah, like some sort of islander look. Like, why would he be like a white person? <laughs> yeah, a, a blonde haired white dude. I'm like, yeah. what? That makes <laughs> no sense. I get it. He's a guy that lives in Maine and he's he lives in a lighthouse, but that's like, uh, and it's like, I just love how that's the one g- g- good thing to come out of 2017. It's like 2017, the year Aquaman jokes died. Yeah. You see him, he's walking on the pier, he's, he's uh, uh, downing whiskey. Oh, man, yeah. My man! My man. He's surfing on the Batmobile. Yeah, that was really good. <laughs> All right, so uh, so that was a, a, a quite a little, a little discussion. Hope you guys enjoyed our in-depth dive into the new gods and the multiverse. And once again, we're really, this is right now we're working on the assumption that DC is going to restore the multiverse, the, the Snyderverse. Now, no, they're probably not going to make a public announcement about it until later because they have to make sure that like all the contracts are signed and everything. So it's not like, okay, so we want to do it, but we're waiting on uh, for like a contract from Ben Affleck and all that stuff. They're going to wait yeah. until they have all their due di- diligence done and then they'll make the announcement. Right. So don't go out with your pitchforks and start burning down their other I mean, movies I mean, and everything keep, just yet. Keep with the hashtags, but be respectful. Yeah. Like, don't be posting it. Don't put hashtags after, like, Warner Brothers post raising awareness of actual events. Like, don't, like I saw, and, like, when they, and they were saying don't kill Asian people, basically that that post after that. A terrorist attack. Uh, there were a lot of people putting restore the Snyderverse, and I'm like, don't do that. Do not Dude, do that. that's like so bad. Why would that you do that? A whole, a whole move. Do not do that. Be yeah. respectful, be kind, but yeah. po- keep posting it because you show people that th- because what Snyder's probably doing is he's accumulating all this data, and it, that's why he, they put out the black and white version of the movie the way they did because that what that's showing is, hey, don't even watch a black and white version if it has Zack Snyder attached to it. Yeah. That's why it just popped up out of nowhere that they were putting up a, 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 a the Justice Gray edition, which I've seen. It actually looks really good. I want, like, a super colored version of it that's, like, all trippy and, like, color you do. patterning. It's called the Whedon Cut. Have you seen the color <laughs> grading in that? <laughs> Everything I is, like, so. my photography, oversaturated. That's what yeah. I did when I was taking photography classes years ago. I would just oversaturate everything and, 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 on Photoshop. That's it perfect it looked it looked dope so but anyway, so yeah and then so uh, i'm trying to see if there's a bit of news we can talk about really quick i think uh the L- new L- lego star wars game was delayed again no please don't say that it, it was delayed no don't i was just i've been not talk- canceled delayed 
I've been talking about this with uh, with other people and saying like how like, you know, where did the announcement go? I thought it was supposed to come out in the summer. There's nothing announced yet. And I was actually thinking about it earlier today, like, when are they going to announce this? And you're telling me they actually delayed it again? Mm-hmm. Oh. They delayed it again. Okay, so... Well, Black, I guess it'll be worth it. So Black Widow may have been delayed again. Yeah, it's now in July. They have to stop doing this because they've delayed it pretty much a year now at this point. Oh, yeah. It, it's been o- over a year now. Yeah, definitely. It was supposed to they come have to out, stop like, doing in... this. I know it's going to happen. That movie's going to come out. It's going to tank hard because well, people have really lost interest at this point. Yeah, I think people are losing interest. But what they're doing is, uh, you know, trying to delay as long as possible so that situation improves a bit with COVID because the movies that all came movies that did come out last year really didn't do that well in theaters and even like earlier this year they haven't done as well like one woman and other stuff they Godzilla v kong did great well that's the thing that's the thing one woman and stuff that came out last year and now earlier this year still people weren't going out but now i think maybe with I don't know, the vaccines or what people just feeling more comfortable now or things improving a bit overall. People are going to theaters again and, and life is improving a bit. They're going to the theater. And Godzilla vs. Kong is the first, like, big blockbuster movie of the year uh, where you see people actually coming out to it, where it's making a lot of money. Like, people, the movie theater here near us, Jared, my parents mm-hmm. wanted to go see it, and they want. And it was sold out. They they literally got there, and they said literally everything is sold out. We you can't, uh, you know, you can't see the movie. You know, they leave like two spaces between each uh, group of uh, people. Yeah. But, but still, like people are going to the theater and and watching movies now. So I guess what they're figuring is, you know, Marvel's like, well, we have a few TV shows coming out. If we just delay black widow one more time and it comes out in the summer things might improve enough that we can make like the full money almost uh with this with the movie coming out i don't know i think maybe they should have just gone ahead i think it was supposed to come out in april or may they should have just stuck with it because i feel like it was close enough but i guess if they want to try to make a little more money you have disney plus just do it already well, just that's the thing they did now confirm also that it's going to come out on Disney Plus with, you know, the $30 price tag if you want it. I'm not paying for that. I'm seeing in the, I will go to a movie theater at that point. It's not worth $30. Right. But I'm just, I'm just saying that like, this means that they, there's, they can't delay it anymore because they're already announcing it for the streaming service. So it's definitely coming out in July. But oh, they'll I mean, delay still, it. The, uh, at this point, <laughs> I have no faith in Disney. I have no faith in any of these organizations. Watch what will happen. They'll delay the Superman movie, the new one, and then all of a sudden they'll go, well, we're not going to really, we're going in a different direction. That's what happened with with Trench and New Gods. Uh, Yeah. I mean, they- That's why I'm like, DC has no plan. Now there's Marvel. Right. It's, I guess, yeah, they're, they're trying to do whatever they can to get as much money as possible with like COVID situations. Everything. Do you know that uh, the biggest movie of the year last year for 2020, Sonic the Hedgehog was the highest grossing superhero film of 2020? <laughs> <laughs> because In its defense, it was a really good movie. It was a good movie. It was a good movie. I, I, I mean, liked it, it a was, lot. It, it, made, it was a good movie. And, you know, they listened to the criticism and they fixed the problem, unlike some movies. So that's a lot of respect, honestly, that they, that they did that. Yeah. But uh, it because Marvel never released their movie last year, and DC, I don't think, yeah, did anything the first either. Year. They they did release their movie last year, Wonder Woman. Oh, They're right. like the yeah, last the last thing to get released. Yeah. Which, let me put it this way. Lod and I have been very vocal that we at least enjoyed Wonder Woman 84. It wasn't like a completely terrible movie. Did it have issues? Yes. Was it better than number one? No. Not by a yeah. long shot. One was one, and the Snyder Cut and Aquaman are about, about the three cl- DC movies that are closest to perfection. Oh, Man, Man of Steel! I put Man of Steel up there. Man of Steel was dope. Yeah, Man of Steel, maybe BVS. Basically, Snyder movies are the best. 
yeah. or movies closely associated with the Snyderverse. But the, the point is, is that I, I think it's going to happen. At least HBO Max is going to say, hey, we'll do it. We'll finance the, move, the two movies. And what they can do is, the, is it, 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 here's how, how they can do this and not like hold up too much of these actors' time. Just say we're going to film it back to back. Meaning what they do is they film all the actor scenes for both movies at once. Yeah. And that way they film all of, all of Ben Affleck's scenes for both movies. He's out. They film Gal Gadot, she's out. They, they, they go down the line, do all the scenes, and then the, and then the, the rest of the years is just it's just putting together the movies in a miniseries. Or I, see, I think the way that, that Zach did, did it with the Snyder Cut was the smart thing. Instead of m- maybe dividing it into into the different episodes, they could just do it like they did with the Snyder Cut and just have it in chapters. Mm-hmm. Because that's what people are doing. They're just watching individual chapters, but you still don't have to wait for the next episode to watch it. Yeah, that's a good idea. Plus the fact, how else would Lad and I have a really fun movie night? Dude, four hours is kind of long, though. Our eyes have to bleed at some point. Hey, I was the one who had to get up for a bathroom break in the middle of the show. (laughs) I did, yeah. Here's an idea. (laughs) When two and three come out, we should watch all three back to back. (laughs) Dude, that's 12 like, hours, bro. I don't think you can survive. I don't think anyone can survive that. <laughs> I'm going to have one of those hospital urinals right near my seat. I just lean over. Uh, you're watching it alone if you do that. <laughs> oh, yeah, boy. Probably. That, that, that would be such... That, that, it would be really cool if they continue... What, if they, you know, they make it the movie... If they started off as chapter eight, you know, like they that continue would be the chapter number. Se- well, it was seven epilogue. Okay. So they can just like make it like eight. That would be you know? great to be a continuation of the story. That's actually a great idea. I'd like I'd, I'd like it like that. Where they continue the numbering through it, it'd be really cool. That'd be great because that way it's showing you it's one epic storyline. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's like it's not even really three four hour movies. It's actually just one twelve. Actually, story. what they could also do is go back through the other two movies and divide those up into chapters, and then now we can have one, and then always like twelve. Yeah, that would be pretty. That's actually a really good idea. I do actually hope they do that if they go with the one movie divide into chapters. I I think Snyder is going to do the one movie chapters because. People have proven that they're going to watch the entire Snyder Cut movie multiple times. I mean, people yeah. have seen it 12 times. I mean, obviously, they have it on the background and such. But still. Yeah. And, and yeah. the whole dividing into chapters is a great idea. Just do that, and then we're good. Yeah, I think it works, especially for, like, a four-hour movie. Like, just because it's so long, it helps to have a little bit of chapter divisions there. You know? Mm-hmm. It also feels like a comic book, right? Like, how they have, like, different it does. sections. It does. If it's like issue one, issue two, except I didn't have to wait a month for the next issue. Yeah. That would suck if they say we're going to have it in the series, except each episode comes out a, a month apart. Be like, <laughs> no. Yeah. That would suck. Yeah. But yeah, so, so basically, a hundred percent. We are operating under the assumption that they're gonna do it. It's gonna happen. So just, uh, to, so we're gonna do a lot of a lot of episodes that are inspired that are inspired by Snyder's universe. Like at some point, we're gonna do Frank M- M- Miller's Dark Knight Returns, where Superman and Batman first fought. We'll do the entire series because it's like a lot of different books. And uh, basically, we're going to do everything that pretty much inspired Snyder's style because I feel like that would be a good way for people to appreciate it. By the way, he, he, here's a great thing. After people watch Justice League, they go back and watch B- BVS and Man of Steel. And these are people that hated Snyder's DC movies. And they're like, this is genius because yeah, they understand where it's be, going. Might be time to go back and rewatch that stuff. That's what we'll do in the summer. By the way, in the summer, I just want to give people a preview. We're going to be doing a lot of... T- different things in the summer mainly the youtube channel we're going to be doing a lot of skits like we have quite a few uh, um, humorous skits coming up and then what we're going to do is we're going to watch all of the snyder movies in other words man of steel bbs and jl one after the other uh, probably not in, in one day 
and then and then we'll do an episode it talking be about. Day. We could probably do BVS. Uh, oh, well, let me see. And, and by the way, when we do BVS, we're doing the Ultimate Edition, not the I've crappy. Never seen, I've never seen the Ultimate Edition, so I'd be hyped. Let me this way: the Ultimate Edition, it's basically they took out so much stuff that explains the BS that they put in the theatrical cut. It's pretty much like Zack Snyder's BVS. <laughs> Release this night, your cut of BBS. And it did. That'd be released. great. That'd be great. I, it I did get, get released. That's what people I, thought was going to happen when the Whedon cut came out. They thought, in like, okay, so in a DVD, ver- so when the DVD version comes out, they're going to release another cut of the movie on there. That would have been great. Yeah. And then I think eventually they'll make Zach, they'll abandon the Whedon cut of Justice League because, first off, Whedon is super controversial. That movie has Flash falling into Wonder Woman's boobs. And I, I put a tweet out, follow me at J- Justice Lord 114. I put a tweet out where I said, I found a humor. Uh, actually, I'll pull up the tweet right now so we can check that out. Because it was just something that I thought of that I, th- I thought was kind of, um, oh, by the way, I'm calling it. I, I put it out on a tweet. I, I'm calling it. I think they will restore the Snyderverse. It will most likely be uh, after the next shareholders call because the shareholders are watching all this social media buzz and all the HBO Max like stuff that's coming from um, from the Snyder Cut, and they're going to be like, "Do it." Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to share my screen real quick to show you this. All right. Let me see. Where's my Twitter? Is that my Twitter? That, that's my Twitter. All right. Here we go. So look at this. So over here right here i said i find it interesting how in the age of social justice warner brothers demands that the whedon cut which minimized the 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 roles of minorities and and denigrated the female characters is canon while the snyder cut whose central character is an african-american and a good one at that i meant to put that in but twitter has a character limit so i couldn't put all that and the restore the snyderverse uh, is non-canon and a movie to be buried yeah. So I'm like, in this age, you would think they would go. Let's a, let's basically make it like that movie never happened. Yeah, you think, right? I know, right? Oh boy. Uh, maybe one day. I think that that's another thing that may happen soon. I mean, mm-hmm. it's more likely that that the, the they'll just restore it and have it be an else world. Well, here's the thing: they don't have to have a, a main Earth. Because if they have the multiverse, they can just... By the way, just to be clear, Warner Brothers, we're not saying cancel everything you just announced. That's a confusion. We just mean do your other stuff because there's because Matt Reeves Batman. I am so excited for that one. Right. But we just want the... the at least, the very least, give us Justice League 1 and 2. If they gave us... Ju- let me put it this way. If they, if they just gave us Justice League 1 and 2 and just left it at that... I'd be fine with it. I'd be like, okay, we got a cool Justice League arc. He got his five movie arc. Now, granted, what I think is going to happen is HBO Max is going to do do the Snyder verse, but they're also going to tell Ben Affleck and Joe, Joe Manganiello, hey, did you guys want to do your stuff on HBO Max? So we'll get the Deathstroke movie, which is supposed to be basically a grounded military movie, except the origin of Deathstroke. So imagine how awesome that would be. I know. And and the Batman movie, which was supposed to feature Barbara Gordon Batgirl. Hmm. So imagine that. So that's why HBO Max is key. They can just take all that stuff and say this is exclusive content to HBO Max. Yeah. Let me put it this way. The Snyder Cut, here's how successful it was. So Canada has their own special streaming service because they don't have HBO Max. And, and then... Um, Warner Brothers put the Snyder verse, the Snyder cut on that too. It beat Game of Thrones. Really? Game of Thrones. That's kind of crazy. Yeah. It defeated the most popular TV show, I think, of all time. That's why I think make the freaking movies capitalize on this. Or yeah. we'll have to release the Armada and do this the old ways. To quote Using the hashtags, army. Hey, it worked, didn't it? It worked the first time. Yeah, I mean, HBO Max saw the potential, right? So they said, that's, hey, why I'm sa- that's why I'm saying it's probably going to happen. 
Because I'm yeah. this way. If this were before the, the Snyder cut, I would have been like, no, there's no way this is going to happen. Yeah. Because let me put it this way. You don't put $70 million into a one-and-done movie. You, you just don't mm-hmm. do that in the film industry. They probably said, let's do $70 million. We plan on doing it, but let's use it as a test subject to see if people want this. If they do, we'll do it. If they don't, yep. we'll say, okay, w- 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 we completed it. HBO Max yep. is most likely g- g- going to say, w- we're going to put it only on our service. And, and let the theatrical stuff be whatever the uh, Warner Brothers wants it to be. That's fine. That's totally yep. fine. Yeah. Because wouldn't it be cool if you have uh, if all of the HBO Max stuff is all the Elseworld stuff? If, I think that would be really cool. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So anyway, all right, so lad. What do you think the odds are that that, uh, that we get the, the announcement that they're going to do JL 1 and 2? In light of the fact that we are uh, talking about, uh, about, about the fact, yeah, I'm saying in light of the fact that we were watching the Snyder Cut. That's why I said, if this had been a year ago, I would have been, there's no way. But anyway, uh-huh. all right, guys. So right. we're gonna. Yeah, I would have yeah. said. I would have said also that there's like little to no odds of that. That's why I think also the, the HBO Max will probably release the air cut probably after Suicide Squad comes out and, and it has its own little time in the sh- in the sun because th- that's gonna be on HBO Max mm-hmm. as well. And then at least I'll watch it on HBO Max and do a review. I'm not sure if Lad wants to watch that with me because I'm not sure if it's his types of movie. But uh, I mean, it's pretty Lad. Will you watch the Suicide Squad with me? It looks kind of, uh, kind of. You watch uh, the lot Snyder cut, dude. People. I mean, you watch the Snyder cut. That's true. Maybe Wonder Peter Woman Capaldi. chopped up someone's head well, after he was skewered was, by a trident. Yeah, it, but that wasn't that. It was the. That was maybe. Just consider it. Let me put it this way. Allow me to sweeten the deal. You're watching it in my home theater. That is true. All right. So anyway, so we're going to ca- call it a night. Hope you guys enjoyed this ep- th- this rather long episode. Talked about the multiverse and new gods. And then we went off for the rails again, as we normally do into the Snyderverse. Mm-hmm. We're mm-hmm. going to be talking about the Snyderverse until they restore the Snyderverse. But anyway, and then, uh, so I-, I still haven't watched the third episode of Falcon and Winter Soldier. I'm going to try and have that done for, for next time. But yeah, we are go- going to do at least a-, a-, a maybe a short discussion on Falcon Winter Soldier. We're not abandoning Marvel. Just for yep. right now, we're talking about the Snyderverse. Mm-hmm. So anyway, Lad, always a pleasure co-hosting with you. Yep. And, uh, yeah, fun times. And s- stay heroic, everyone. Bye-bye. See ya.